The Buffalo Sabres have finally made a move. Head coach Ralph Kruger has been dismissed. We'll discuss who's taking over and what this means for the team, along with my thoughts coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, something has finally happened with the Buffalo Sabres. GM Kevin Adams and the ownership group there has been way more patient, taking their time to make a move here than I ever would have expected. But the shoe has finally dropped here, and head coach Ralph Kruger has been relieved of his coaching duties. I know it's something that I expect many Sabres fans to be quite pleased with. I know many fans have been calling for this change. It's the 12th loss in a row last night where they uh, faced off against New Jersey, who had also been in a bad slump as well, not having much success, uh, and they even lost to them. So it's, it's a bad sign here of things to come. I mean, if everything that could go wrong for Buffalo this year has gone wrong, and I feel terrible for the great Sabres fans who I know. It's a great hockey market that's a really, um, you know, good fan base have put up with a lot and keep, you know, going to the games when they're able to and buying the merchandise, supporting the team, and they keep getting disappointed with lackluster rosters and just, you know, playing lack of success and not good enough. This team deserves better. The fans deserve better. And when will they get it? I don't know. But, I mean, we've had a situation here where Jack Eichel could very well be out for the season. Uh, I mean, we had a situation last night. Taylor Hall got a puck to the face on a slap shot from the point from Colin Miller. Uh, I think he's going to be all right. He did come back. But, you know, how much is that going to impact him? You got Jeff Skinner scoring two goals on the year. Year. I mean, they've had other injuries. They've had an issue with COVID a little while. I mean, Ristolainen was out for an extended time with real bad case of COVID. Rasmus Dahlin has not progressed, really. Uh, some are wondering about, you know, the bust question on him right now. But I think a lot of that is just the system and the whole environment myself. But really, drastic changes need to happen in Buffalo. This team is supposed to be getting better every year. The last couple of years outside of this year, we saw a good start and then a really bad fall off of the finish here and that just didn't even come this year like they just got off to a miserable start and never really found themselves i mean kruger to my in my opinion was part of the problem but it's not all on him i mean this roster is just not good enough period i mean but at the end of the day a lot of the coaching decisions he made i do think were questionable and i was not convinced that he was the right guy for the job even when they hired him I mean, even jason bottrell in the last uh, as the last gm Really didn't do a great job, but I was optimistic for the Sabres because he was highly regarded as a well-respected assistant GM in Pittsburgh for a long time. Learned from a lot of really, uh, you know, great mentors there, but it just never really translated once he got to Buffalo. Some of the moves he made were certainly questionable. Uh, you know, like the Ryan O'Reilly trade is a big one that comes to mind right off the hop here. But what kind of changes will we see with the roster it's difficult to say. I mean, will they move on from guys like Jack Eichel or Rasmus Dahlin? Because they could get big hauls in return. Or will they continue to try to work with those players and build around them? I don't know. But certainly, they're a long ways from really being a playoff contender, in my opinion. Now, this is not the only change here today. Along with Kruger, they've also dismissed assistant Steve Smith. And the new coaching staff will consist of other members that are already employed by the Sabres. So a uh, former assistant, Don Granato, is now going to become the interim head coach. Now we're waiting for the Sabres to confirm this as well. There will be a press conference coming up in the next couple of hours. But based on the uh, Sabres beat reporters that are have inside knowledge here, this is what they're reporting here right now, that Granato will be the interim head coach. And that right now development coaches Matt Ellis and Dan Girardi uh, will take over as assistant coaches along the bench here. So, obviously, they get a decent amount of experience there. I mean, Don Granato comes from a, a pretty good hockey family. The Granados, of course, are very well known. Has had a pretty solid NHL career, pretty solid coaching career, well known. It was constant for the Badgers program. Of course, their sister, Kami Granato, very well decorated, one of the top women's players of all time. Uh, so, certainly... Uh, you know, lots of experience there. Don Granato has worked in a variety of roles. Uh, he's worked with his brother Tony Wisconsin as an assistant. He's worked as an assistant for a couple of NHL teams, including Chicago and Buffalo. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do. Uh, really hard to say long-term if they go with him and these guys or if they go in a completely different direction in the offseason.
They could very well just be placeholders. They're already employed by the Sabres. Uh, at this point, they not may not necessarily even be uh, let go from their jobs at the end of the season. They could very, uh, you know, basically reassign. Hard to say or go back to their old jobs or something. I don't know. But Buffalo is an absolute mess. Uh, they need change. They need change. They can't get it quick enough. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do at the, at the trade deadline. Uh, I do wonder, though, you got to stop and think here. I mean, the Taylor Hall curse theory, is there really something to it? I mean, he went for a long stretch in Edmonton where they were not doing well. They get traded to New Jersey. He got one small taste of the playoffs, wins a Hart Trophy. Then look what's happened since. Uh, ever since Taylor Hall and the Devils had that uh, really good comeback season, made the playoffs, even though they lost early, he had a Hart Trophy out of it. Obviously, had a remarkable season. But then not long after in New Jersey, they cleaned house. And uh, John Hines and Ray Shiro were both fired from their positions. Uh, okay, not long after, he goes to Arizona. Uh, and then, of course, in Arizona, John Chaka up and leaves. Now, of course, I don't think we can put any of that on Taylor Hall. But still, you know, it just seems like something seems to follow him around. And then he goes to Buffalo on a pretty high-paying one-year deal an opportunity to continue to prove himself after being injured a bit the last couple of years, not putting up the offensive numbers since his Hart Trophy season, uh, and an opportunity to play with some good skilled players like Jack Eichel. And really, his numbers have been terrible this year, and now Ralph Kruger gets fired. It's just it's something that seems to be following him around like an albatross. Uh, I mean, we, we can't obviously blame Taylor Hall for all of these teams' failures, but it just you start to wonder. There's a few players around the league that it just seems to follow them like that. And I, I don't know what happens next year, but maybe teams should be leery about bringing Taylor Hall on, either as a trade deadline acquisition or as a signing as a free agent in the offseason. But we know Taylor Hall had worked with Kruger before in Edmonton, seemed to be a coach he was fond of working with. So I do think if there was any chance of him staying in Buffalo, that's probably gone now. Not that I really think there was a great chance before. I mean, he will say all the right things that he's interested. He'll talk to them and all that. But I really don't know that he will stay. And a lot of it's going to depend, though, on what he gets offered in the offseason. After another down season on a team that had no success this year, the opportunities for him in free agency next year might not be all that fruitful. So hard to say what opportunities he has. Maybe he does stay in Buffalo because they're the only ones willing to offer him something decent, but do they want to keep him as well? you got to wonder. I mean, anyway, something has to give him Buffalo. What further changes do you expect? This is just the tip of the iceberg before they sell off as assets at the deadline and then go into the offseason and really try to decide how to move forward from here and put out the dumpster fire that's can become the Buffalo Sabres. After many, many years of rebuilding and rebuilding, you'd think they'd be out of this mess by now, but they're no further ahead than they were a decade ago. Let me know your thoughts on this situation and how the Sabres move forward down in the comments, and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content, and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.